The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We got a mixed market, pretty calm action to kick things off. Pulling up a five minute chart of the S&Ps. We're trading right now positive by two points at 46.95. We make an all time high of 47.11 on Friday, right near that level. Pretty tame action so far this week to kick things off. NASDAQ 100 up 49 points this morning so far, 16,377. That's a third of a percent in the positive. We've got the Dow negative a bit right now down 49 points, 36,263 in the Russell, negative by six. That's a quarter percent in the red. How about Bitcoin? You like even numbers? Our man Basil Chapman just finished up an awesome hour of the Tiger Technicians Hour, live at eight in the morning. 69,000 on the dot. Last night for Bitcoin, seems like 70,000, all but inevitable at this point, right? A lot of people already talking about 100,000 in Bitcoin. You had Ethereum making all-time highs yesterday. During the day, we make another all-time high in the overnight session of 48.80. Not long ago in Ethereum, you were down at a price point uh, of the low there, 17.27. Uh, about, what is that? three and a half months ago to 48.48. That, folks, is why people love cryptocurrency in a big way, let alone the uh, negligible coins, we'll call them. Um, the, the biggest ones out there, you can return 100 to 150 percent in three months, let alone the Shiba Inus of the world and how they trade. Crude right now up 35 pennies at 82.28. We got the gold contract up two dollars at 18.30. You see the move gold has had from last Wednesday at 17.58. You're talking about pushing 18.30 this morning. That's a solid 70 dollar move from the lows we had last Wednesday. And notes and bonds will finish it up. We got a little bit of higher price and lower yield this morning. We got the 10 year positive 15 ticks. We got the 30 year positive a full point and five ticks at 163.14. Let's jump into the volatility index. VIX. We got some elevated levels on this VIX right now with the market trading right near all time highs. I said, pay attention to this one yesterday. VIX hit in 1769. We're above 17 right now with the S&Ps basically within a stone's throw of all time highs. Interesting action, elevated VIX, a little bit of premium in this market. Uh, pay attention to that one. All right, let's jump right into it. We got some economic news to kick things off. Inflation, 0.6% US price U.S. producer prices climb 0.6% adding to inflation concerns is how Bloomberg puts it there. 0.6% uh, you get the producer price index final demand increase 0.6% from the prior month. And how about this number 8.6%. 8.6% from a year earlier, matching forecast, uh, excluding volatile food and energy components. Now, those two are through the roof. They might be volatile. They're volatile only to the upside right now when you talk about food and energy costs. The core PPI rising 0.4% in a month and 6.8% from a year ago. You put that thing on a chart, man. You're talking about levels that we haven't seen uh, in at least a decade, I think was what I was reading about as this number came out this morning. The report underscores how trans transportation bottlenecks, material shortages, and increasing labor costs have sent prices soaring across the economy in recent months. And with the ongoing supply chain challenges anticipated to linger into 2022, sustained price increases at the producer level uh, presage additional consumer price increases in the coming months. Now, here's the part I wanted to get to. More than 60% of the headline increase was due to goods, which jumped 1.2%. That's quite a number, folks, on a monthly basis. Higher energy costs, including that for gasoline, drove the gain. The cost of services up just 0.2%. Construction was a big one in there. Uh, other data point to growing price pressures, compensation compensation surged by the most on record in the third quarter and a gauge of prices paid by service providers rose to the highest level in 16 years. We got records all over the place. A record of 32% of small business owners said in October they plan to raise compensation in the next 
three months. That, folks, is not transitory. All right, You don't give people raises and then in a few months come back to them and say, ah, oil went down, so we're going to decrease your raise. Uh, not happening. Companies are passing those costs on to consumers in the form of higher prices, fueling inflation further. It's quite a cycle right now, right? you got higher costs leading to higher wages, higher wages leading to higher costs. Uh, the cycle goes on and on. They break down some of the other stuff. Producer prices excluding food, energy, and trade services, a measure often preferred by economists that strips out the most volatile, volatile as we said, 0.4% from the prior month compared with a year earlier, 6.2%. 6.2% in a year, folks. 2% uh, is the number that the Fed is looking for. They want to get back to that number. And man, we got some ways to go to get back to 2% when we're dealing with 6 to 8% numbers for PPI numbers across the board. All right, let's get into some of the equities. The one of the most interesting ones out there. How about GE? No longer going to be the conglomerate that they were for the better part of a century plus. Uh, they're going to split into three units, ending the conglomerate for good is how Bloomberg sums it up. They're going to split into three separate companies in a stunning breakup of the iconic manufacturer founded by Thomas Edison. Sprawling business once made it the world's most valuable company. <coughs> Excuse me, so folks, getting over a little bit of a cold still. It's going to spin off its healthcare business in early 2023 and combine its renewable energy, fossil fuel power, and digital units into a single energy focused entity that will be spun off a year later. I mean, think how long it's going to take. So you got the healthcare is going to be pushed out in early 2023. So you're talking about what, 14 to 16 months from now. A year after that, so you're talking about 26 months, two and a half years from now, you're going to get the energy business, uh, the energy focused entity, as they put it. The remaining company is going to consist of GE Aviation and its jet engine business. Uh, what we're doing today is creating three outstanding investment grade global leaders in healthcare, aviation and energy. That's their CEO, Larry Culp. Uh, GE has had the lead in these markets for a long time, and today we're setting ourselves up for another century of leadership. That's optimism from the CEO there, folks. Not sure that's going to be the case, but the market likes what this is happening. That's for sure. We'll jump over to their chart in a moment. They are higher, uh, up 8%, as they put it, in the pre-market, up 17% at one point. It expects to take a one-time $2 billion charge from separation, transition, and operational costs tied to the plan, plus tax costs of less than $500 million. Not really that big of a cost when you think about what they have going on in that company to split that all up. Sweeping plan marks the end of an era in which conglomerates defined much of the 20th century. Uh, yeah, Jack Welsh, huh? He was he was quite the figure over there. They've been struggling for a while, though, over a GE. Uh, Jeffrey Immelt continued to reshape the company over some 16 years, starting in 2001, though with notably less success. I would say putting that lightly, uh, putting that lightly in a big way. Let's take a look at GE. There's your acceleration on that news. And my goodness, talk about giving it back. Who was buying GE at 126.40? We've already given back $13. You're up five bucks. Market, Whew, market, uh, not really giving it the credit that it did off the bat. Now, let's just put this thing back. And the reason why I said... <coughs> Did you see the way they summed that up? <clears throat> Continued, this is talking about Immelt, when he started in 2001, when Jack Welsh left. Continued to reshape the company over some 16 years. So he was there from 2001 to 2017. Well, let me show you this chart from 2001 to 2017, folks. 2001, we're trading at about 300. 2017, we're trading at about 150. You lose 50% of the value over the 16 years he was here. And look at this thing leading up to 2001. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with our man, Kevin Hicks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Just finishing up that update. Man, you look at where this company was, GE, 484 bucks back in. That is August of 2000, before you had the internet bubble there. A little bit of a burst from 480 down to 200. But as I said, I mean, Jack Walsh, look at this run it had from 18 bucks back in 85 to 484. I mean, even back it up to where it was in 94, you're trading at $64 up to 484. Uh, and man, talk about some volatility since then. Down at one away, once the world's richest, wealthiest company out there, market capitalization wise uh, Bloomberg just to pull it up one more time they were at a level of 400 billion let me pull up this number here yeah 20 years ago it was the world's largest company at 400 billion five years ago it was just hanging in the top 10 and as of Monday there were dozens of bigger market caps in the S&P 500 we all know some of those notable names GE not part of that uh, but they're trying to do a turnaround three companies coming out of that and uh, as we saw though the market really giving back a lot of those gains already pulling back to 112.57 from 108.42 as they chop up that company in to three separate ones. All right, jumping around, what else we got going on? A uh, lot of companies coming out still. How about PayPal? A little bit lower. Let's see how they're trading this morning. P, what, Y, P, L is their symbol. There you go, trading even lower. Down $17 now on their numbers. A little bit of a spike up to 244 Forecast, not what you want though, in a big way. Cutting the full year sales and profit forecasts. Uh, transactions tied to eBay marketplace tumbled 45% in the third quarter, a, a bigger drop than the previous three months, PayPal said in their statement. Headwinds abound for PayPal heading, heading into 2022, and the weak outlook probably outweighed significant new business wins with the likes of Amazon. That's one analyst there. Uh, the figures overshadow the company's announcement that it had inked a deal with Amazon to allow the firm's Venmo wallet to... Uh, in the U.S. to be accepted at Amazon, but man, you want to talk about forecasts. PayPal now expects revenue to climb just 18 percent. The market was looking for, uh, excuse me, the company had previously forecast a 20 percent jump. Total payments volume is now expected to increase by as much as 34 percent, while adjusted earnings per share forecast to rise 19 percent. Always remarkable how these companies are judged. I mean, imagine having a company, folks, that you're growing almost at 20 percent to $25 billion a year, and the market says, no, 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 we had higher expectations for you. Venmo on track to deliver $900 million in revenue. PayPal has previously promised. The firm also believes Venmo, Venmo's transaction margin, a measure of the wallet's profitability, will be positive this year. PayPal stood by its previous forecast for adding net new users 
to its many platforms, saying that figure should climb by approximately 55 million for the year. Big numbers, but not quite as big as the market was looking for. Excuse me, folks. Uh, PayPal announced during the period that it is not pursuing an acquisition of Pinterest. That was all the hype that we had going on. Ending days of speculation over a potential $45 billion deal between the two companies with Pinterest visual search and scrapbooking platform. They could have gained more data about the products consumers are buying, but not so fast, at least not at $45 billion. And PayPal, I mean, you look at this thing. From 310 on a couple occasions this year, we're going to open at about 211. Now, this is going to be a critical area for PayPal because you back it up to the highs of 2020. You look where we were. We had a high at 212 back in August of last year. We're trading right at 212 right now. You also have a high of 215 in October. Okay, those areas were resistance. Uh, we'll see if we blow right through those areas or they might act as a little bit of support on the open. PayPal gonna open right down at that level, down about $17, $18. Still a very strong company, folks, but you're talking about multiples. Very important to talk about multiples when you're dealing with growth companies. Because many times you're dealing with growth that is just priced into levels that is uh, very difficult to keep up with some of these equities. You see it here. I mean, growing at 18% to $25 billion a year, and the market shaves off 8% uh, almost on the open for PayPal. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on, some of the equities that are moving today. We'll jump to where are we jumping to next? How about the meme stocks? AMC. Top Wall Street estimates as movie fans return. Uh, really interesting, this one. AMC, uh, pretty marginal move. You're down about three bucks. There's the weekly, right? The craziness of the meme stocks. We put it on a 15 minute. You're down from about 45 to 42.35. They may be coming out with their own cryptocurrency. Uh, the movie theater business definitely getting revived. Third quarter sales, 763 million. Market was only looking for 708. A loss of 44 cents a share. Market was looking for a loss of 53 cents a share. Sales marked the best quarterly result since the first period of last year. Theaters are mostly reopened now. Um, still movie attendance, while much improved, has not returned to levels seen before March of 2020. Not surprising there. It plans to have, yeah, management is trying to diversify the company. It's pushing deeper into the popcorn industry. I mean, they're doing everything, folks. Uh, plans to have up to 15 retail stores and kiosks selling cinema treats by the end of 2022. Not sure how that's going to play into the long-term uh, vision of that company. Lean further into the fandom with meme investors. In August, the company said it wants to accept Dogecoin as payments for its movie tickets. Um, you know, this thing is still dealing with quite the valuation, folks. You jump over here to the fundamentals tab on the Thinkorswim platform, and you're talking about a company valued at $22 billion. And they are transforming themselves to their credit. But you talk about a company worth $22 billion, they're losing money, and I'm not sure they can get to profitability. The world has changed, folks. Movie theaters, they're going to be around forever. But, man, you're seeing it. I mean, already I signed up for HBO Max myself. During COVID, uh, all of those great movies now coming out on HBO Max. That's going to change a little bit, but people becoming a little bit more comfortable maybe watching movies at home. you got Netflix, HBO, Prime, right? Disney, et cetera. Uh, Disney with a little bit of a, business, a different business plan coming out. <coughs> excuse me. Um, charging a premium service, about 30 bucks to watch some of those movies, even for subscribers. A lot of companies playing with a bunch of different business plans in terms of how to capitalize off of their content. But AMC, struggling a bit. I would be careful of that one as the meme stocks basically run this thing. Uh, there is no way to judge the value of this company trading at $45 for a $20 billion valuation when they lose money. And they were already in trouble coming into COVID, folks. That's a five-year weekly. There's your monthly. I mean, hysteria, folks. You came into this year at a buck ninety-one. You're sitting comfortably above forty dollars, and not sure that makes any sense at all. But nonetheless, the market is never wrong, folks. And we're sitting at forty-two bucks this morning on AMC. Back to the short-term charts. Checking out what else we got going on. We're going to stay to some of those movie companies. Netflix saw this one up this morning. Interesting. They're going to be rolling out TikTok-like short clip feature aimed at kids. Company to test kid clips on iOS in U.S. and other countries. Uh, feature is similar to Fast Laughs comedy offering for adults. I mean, they're experimenting, folks. You see the graphic there in terms of what they're trying to do. Uh, Kid Clips feature appearing on Netflix's iOS app will show short videos from the company's existing library of children's programs and movies. Netflix plans to add new clips daily based on its current and future offerings. <coughs> 
if you're familiar, folks, uh, if you have small kids in the house and you have Netflix, you've probably seen the show Coco Melon. Uh, I've seen the show Coco Melon many times. Uh, it's amazing some of the programming they do have for children out there and how it delivers. Excuse me, but nonetheless, Netflix putting this thing on a weekly, you're just sitting right in your all-time highs. This thing consolidated for the better part of a year, broke out of that consolidation from 550. We're sitting comfortably at about 650 right now for Netflix shares. We jump over to Disney. Disney, quite a different story. Kind of been struggling at about the 170 to 180 range. We'll put this on a daily. You see, uh, and I'll back it up a little bit to see the full run we had there on the weekly. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me, folks. Uh, all right. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back for the market open, folks. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ADC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps up five points right now. Coming into that open just under 4,700. You got the NASDAQ 100 up 52 points. Dow negative by three. Russell negative by three as well. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks right now as we kick things off. Amazon shares up almost another full percent at 35.19 this morning, trading at 35.24. 
up about $33. We'll jump to Microsoft shares, talk about strength, man. Microsoft trading at 337. Let's jump over to the fundamentals, see what kind of market caps we're dealing with some of these tech stocks. Microsoft, $2.53 trillion company, whereas Apple currently sitting. Apple basically flat for the day, 2.47. Microsoft holding on to the top spot in a big way. We jump over to Tesla. Been all the rage lately, excuse me, TSLA is their symbol. Tesla shares up about a half a percent. Pretty remarkable, everything that went on for the weekend, right? And yesterday, pretty tame action right now. You're trading at 1170. You came into the weekend at 1220, and you had uh, the world's richest man talking about that he was potentially going to sell a $30 billion position um, in Tesla. Uh, so it's interesting here. My dad sent over some articles over on Bloomberg there. Uh, Musk's brother. Kimball Musk, brother to Tesla CEO Elon Musk, and a board member at the company, sold almost 90,000 shares of Tesla on November 5th. Folks, if you think this isn't tied to what's going on, uh, he sold at an average price. You ready for this one? $1,229 per share via, via JP Morgan. The filing says the sale came one day before Elon posted a poll on Twitter asking if he should sell 10% of his Tesla stock, a stake worth about $21 billion is uh, how they sum it up. And my goodness, I mean, what is, what is, I got to break out the calculator for that one. Let's do it. What is 88,500 shares, 88,500 shares at a price tag of $1,229.91. You're talking about a $110 million sale of Tesla stock for Elon's brother the day before Elon goes to Twitter to try and gain some cover, potentially selling himself. It's a lot of game theory going on in a big way. Elon, one of the brightest geniuses on the planet. Uh, keep track of all of this going on, folks. And Tesla, now giving back some of the gains it had early. You're flat on the session at 1163. I mean, pay attention, folks. You got his brother selling a $110 million position at 1229. You got Elon potentially selling a $21 billion position. And you got this stock to the moon, man. I mean, even from May. For May, we're up more than 100%. Let alone in the last month, we're up 50%. Let alone from the beginning of 2020, you're up 1,400%, 1,300%, something crazy like that. <coughs> Tesla is a very strong company, folks. They're going to be around probably forever, at least for our lifetimes. Um, you're pushing a $1.2 trillion market cap right now. Be careful on Tesla shares. Everything can have pullbacks, folks. Uh, nobody probably saw the writing on the wall on GE never touching a valuation that it saw in 2020, excuse me, 2000, right? Who would have thought that 484 was a price point you would never see in GE again, at least for the better part of multiple decades, let alone you think that you might have a strong company that you can just hold through retirement? Not even close, folks. Be careful of all of those equities because anything can have a pullback, even the best of them all. Amazon shares will jump to the best of them all right now in terms of services, uh, in terms of retail, Amazon up three quarters of a percent. All right, let's jump down to some of the other companies that are reporting this morning. Uh, excuse me, not reporting, that are moving this morning. And what was I jumping to? Where are we? Where's Palantir? Uh, well, I wanted to jump to Palantir. They had their numbers last night, giving it back down 6.2% for Palantir. You were up to 28 bucks. Now, this thing, a lot of secrecy in what they're coming out with. You're back to 25, got ahead of itself up to 45. We just got chopping around between about 20 and 30 bucks for Palantir. Peloton expands its strength training with camera equipped TV box, 495 device takes Peloton into new market beyond cardio. Company also launches new heart rate band and voice assistant. My take on this, folks, and they may succeed, okay, but they're reaching a little bit here, okay? They're reaching because their exercise bikes are pulling back in a big way, and they realize whether it was their treadmill, treadmill, uh, they realize they need more than just a bike because they've sold bikes to, to a lot of people. They're having trouble selling them right now. They dropped the price, price $400. People aren't using the bikes as often as they have. I mean, I, they want to get into competing in the, in the TV sector. 
man, that is going to be a tough one, folks. Uh, the Peloton Guide device allows users to access a video library of strength training classes from their TV and uses a two-dimensional wide-angle camera and artificial intelligence technology. Yeah, that's quite a spin. I wonder what that is. To analyze and provide feedback on the workout, users can exercise with their own equipment and weights. How convenient of them to let you exercise with your own weights at home as long as you buy their TV for 500 bucks. Again, not a fan of what's going on there. We'll jump over to Peloton. Peloton shares up 1.3%, but yeah, can you see a lift on that chart? This is a weekly. I can't see a lift on that chart at all. We'll put it on a five-year daily, okay? Even now, just maximum pain on this equity, folks. I mean, there's no reason that this thing can't get back down to whether it's 38 bucks. I mean, think about this. Think about the Peloton is about to give back almost all of the gains that it had during COVID. Are you kidding me? Who would have thought that Peloton kicking off the year around 140 to 170 would have erased all of the COVID gains? Are you telling me that this company is going to be at the same price prior to the COVID pandemic when we spent a year and a half at home and they're selling exercise equipment that took over the world almost? That should be a scary realization for investors. You're now below the 618 of the full COVID low of 1770 up to 171. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me, folks. If you think about it, there's already a million things that you can do from your TV at home, folks. Everybody has smart TVs, and I say everybody, I'm generalizing. Many people have smart TVs at this point. If you don't have a smart TV, what do you have? You have a Roku, you have an Apple TV, uh, you have an Amazon stick, right? Fire stick. I watch YouTube all the time. Folks, if you haven't checked it out yet, if you have a Roku, download or you don't even have to download right jump on the youtube app pull up tfnn i do it all the time you can watch tfnn live on your television i bring that up because you can watch exercise classes on your tv already through youtube you don't need to buy a special 500 hundred dollar tv with access to a peloton guide very contrived in my opinion of how they're going to try and sell that uh and the markets markets you know making them pay that is not a lift for this company folks peloton Okay, is not going to be worth 15 to 20 billion dollars by trying to sell TVs, folks. Okay, it's not going to happen. All right, you're going to be competing with Amazon. All right, you're going to be competing with Roku. Peloton, there's just not as much of an advantage to warrant buying a Peloton TV. And I am all about health and fitness and whatever you got to do, folks. We're all um, trying to be as healthy as we can. And one of the things that's always fascinating, right, is that there's always like the next craze, the next easiest diet, the next easiest way to get healthy. Most of the time, folks, we all know what we have to do to be healthy, right? It's just doing it. It's more of a mental battle than it is figuring out what the recipe is. We all know the recipe, all right? It's uh, getting exercise, it's eating a little bit healthier. Um, and if a Peloton TV helps you do that, kudos to you. But I don't see that happening, folks. They're reaching in a big way and the market making them pay for it. You're up 1.7% today. Be careful, $15 billion company at these prices still. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for valued tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. S&P's right now up by two. You got the NASDAQ barely in the positive. NASDAQ 100 up by 40. Dow and the Russell barely in the red right now. Crude up 90 cents at 82.83. We got gold up $2 at 18.29 right now. Jumping back to the S&P real quick. I got it up on a daily chart. Remarkable, the S&P back into the uptrend channel that you've been in for the better part of, we're talking about six months right now, back to May. Remarkable. We were pushing almost 4,000 in May. We're pushing 4,700 right now. And the S&Ps, you traded down to a low October 1st of 4,260. And you are back into that uptrend channel, folks. You make it to the top level of that. And you're talking about almost 100 points above it in the S&Ps. Now, we take a look at the Qs real quick. Qs above the trend line. And I have to go back more than a year to see where we're at in that queues. Now this one goes from really where the market took off uh, for the better part of, we're talking about almost a year ago. Remarkable that the election was a year ago, folks. I, I saw that and I said, man, time is just crazy. Um, November, the markets really take off. This trend line begins a little bit prior to that, maybe in September. It's been a one-way rocket ship from 260 and man the nasdaq wouldn't imagine that the queues actually break out of this to the upside but that's what it did folks keep your eye on it the queues trading at 399 right now up about a quarter percent all right jumping down to what else we have going on disney talk about time flying Disney didn't even have a streaming service two years ago. Talk about timing being right, too. Disney launches their streaming service in November. The whole world shuts down three months later, February to March. Uh, they got a special going on. Uh, one month of service to $2. We do have Disney in my newsletter, folks, Rocket Equities and Options. If you want to try it out, everything we do at TFNN has a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, just remarkable that they launched it two years ago. When you think about what a mainstay it is now in U.S. households, they got a special going on for two bucks. Uh, and yeah, just uh, kind of interesting. Two years ago, time is just flying in a big way. It just does not stop. All right, what else do I have up here? Yeah, talking about holidays. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Holiday web shoppers face an increase of out of stock goods. I've been saying it, folks. Don't even wait for Black Friday. You want something? In particular, if it's available for Christmas, get it now. Online shoppers looking to stock up for the holidays are finding that already virtual store shelves keep getting emptier. Consumers saw two billion with a B out of stock messages last month. That's Adobe Analytics said in a study released Tuesday based on total page views that include available goods. The share of out of stock messages rose by a third compared to a year earlier. Adobe said in the email compared to October 2019, the share more than quadrupled. Yeah, I mean, not even fair to compare it to October of 2019. Uh, much of the dislocation coming during 2020. That's kind of an obvious statement in its own right. 
The increase underscores how port congestion and a squeeze on trucking capacity are rippling through the consumer economy. Retail giants such as Walmart and Target say they're prepared to handle the holiday rush. What else are they going to say, right? What are they going to say? We're not going to do well. We're going to fail during the holidays. You're not going to hear them say that, folks. Uh, the stocking headaches mean that shoppers will need to be prepared to be flexible. That's quite a spin on things. The good shortage is not just online, according to Morning Consult. The study found that among those who have already started their holiday shopping, more than half reported that a product they wanted to purchase in a store was out of stock. More than half. <coughs> I think this is going to persist in a big way, folks. Get ready for it as it keeps coming. All right, before we get to the holidays, though, we got a special treat coming up at TFNN a week from tomorrow, folks, Wednesday, November 17th, Mr. Larry Pesavento, he is going to be in live, a live trading webinar, Trade What You See. Uh, you can sign up for this on the front page of TFNN.com. It's a five-hour live webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time next Wednesday, November 17th. The full five-hour archive will be. Uh, excuse me, the full five-hour webinar will be archived if you can't attend live. During this live trading five-hour webinar, you'll see the tools you can use to generate consistent profits, is as La how Larry puts it. You'll see when to use ABCDs as a leading indicator, when not to, how to use the patterns within the larger trend, including adjustments you should make if you're trading ABC counter trend. Uh, you'll see the deconstruct ABC patterns, how to break them down. Join Larry a week from tomorrow, folks. That is going to be $295. What you do gain is you get a month of his newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7. That's a $97 value order already, so it brings it down by about a third of the cost. If you're already a subscriber to Fibonacci 24-7, you'll receive your next month for free as well. So that's an automatic savings as well. It will be archived, folks. Uh, I encourage you to go to the front page of TFNN, click on the link. You can see what Larry's gonna be talking about in terms of methodology. During this five-hour live trading webinar, uh, Larry can't be live trading in terms of every minute of the five hours. So as he's looking at the markets, walking you through the trades he's setting up, he's going to be going over those methodologies in terms of what patterns that he's using, uh, the patterns that help identify shifts in supply and demand, not talking about ABCs trend change pattern that gives you an early entry into the trend, how to use ABCDs to generate direct market feedback, um, et cetera, et cetera. Check it out, folks. He always does an outstanding job. Uh, and for those that attended the prior webinar that Larry did live trading in August, you're going to get to go to this one. So that should be a good turnout as well. You got a bunch of people in there. You'll have a good uh, room full of traders for that going on a week from tomorrow. And man, it's pretty remarkable. We got that. And then the week after that is Thanksgiving, folks. Time is marching on in a big way. All right. Speaking of time, what else is going on today? It's a big day, folks. It's my dad's birthday. If you see him in the den, if you see him on his program, Wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. Gotta love it, man. Send him an email, ob1 at tfnn.com. There you go. Happy birthday, man. Gotta love it. Birthdays. And with that, we got the S&Ps creeping back into negative territory, folks. S&Ps negative by four. We just gave back about 10 points to 46.90. NASDAQ holding on to some of those gains up 15 right now. Dow off 100, a little bit of a sell-off. Russell off 13, a little bit of a sell-off. Let's check out that VIX volatility index right now, 17.53. Let's jump around to some of the stocks that are moving this morning. GE up about 5.7% as the conglomerate's going to split things up. Tesla shares, ooh, watch out, folks. Tesla, they must have heard me talking about Elon's brother selling uh, about 15% of his position for $110 million up at $1,229. I kid, but Tesla giving it back. Who somebody else is selling. Maybe Elon's brother's selling the rest of his stake. Maybe that's Elon. Maybe that's Elon selling 10% of his position for $20 billion. You never know, folks. I mean, I kid, but hey, it might be happening. As you got Tesla down 2.8%, that thing is dropping, man. Watch out. Let's check around some of the other stocks. Amazon shares up a percent right now. Microsoft shares flat. Apple shares right now up half a percent. We jumped to PayPal that had their numbers out. Yeah, PayPal continuing to drop down about 10% right now. You pull up the weekly, man. And like I said, we're kind of stuck at these highs that we had back in 2020. You break through those highs, next stop is 175 for PayPal, down from 205. All right, let's check out uh, what else we have in terms of commodities, currencies. This chart of Bitcoin, my goodness, sitting at 68,000 right now. You got crude sitting at almost 83 bucks. 
Gold contract up $2 this morning at 1830. And notes and bonds, we got the 10 year sitting right now, yielding at about 1.45%. You check out this chart, not quite a trend line. You might have a little triangle action going on right now. Um, man, we get up to the upper portion of this trend line, though. You're talking about 133.12, almost a full point and a half above where we're trading at right now on that 10 year. All right, folks, we got all the indices in the red. We'll be right back in three minutes to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets sliding into negative territory a bit. There's your S&P action. We're down about 16 points from where we were on the open from 4,700. We touch a high of 4,700.5. We're trading right now at 4,684.75 in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100 down about 30 points right now. Dow off 94. We jump over to Robinhood. Robinhood shares down 3.1%. You see the drop-off last night? That having to do with a data breach. Uh, 7 million people uh, is what they have there. 310 of them, pretty small number so far, are the ones who suffered the worst privacy compromise is what Bloomberg is talking about here in terms of basically talking about birth dates, addresses, and the likes for those people. The one thing I'll say here, folks, is it's never 
the full story when this stuff first comes out. And Robinhood's got some issues in a big way, and this is just going to weigh on them even further. You jump over to the Analyze tab right now. We're talking about a company valued at $32 billion almost. You check out the chart on Robinhood. There's your three-year weekly. Yeah, we don't need a three-year weekly. This thing's been public. There's your daily. I mean, you're talking about pushing all-time lows of 33.25 after this thing spikes to 85 bucks. That was a little bit of a Reddit-fueled meme stock mania. Uh, and yeah, I don't know where this thing goes, folks. Crypto, crypto's on fire. Crypto's going nowhere. Robinhood has that market right now, but they don't have anything that prevents crypto trading from going anywhere else. I mean, there's no reason uh, that the likes of, whether it's TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, Charles Schwab, sponsors of our program, but even the likes of Fidelity, the likes, you're gonna have op more options to trade crypto, to use crypto in the future. And the fact that Robinhood is just making so much money off of that sector right now, um, not sure that's gonna be a long-term success story. And it seems like they just keep getting piled on here. Uh, data breach to 7 million people, negative stories aplenty for that company in a big way. Bitcoin, 68,000, we're holding steady, gold up $1. Market's giving it back a bit. We'll jump over to the VIX as we end the program. VIX pushing 1788, all things considered. Pretty low volatility right now as we come into a potentially pretty volatile time. End of the year, market's sitting at all time highs. We got PPI through the roof. We might get a new Fed chair, all of that. Market sitting at 4682 nonetheless. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. He did his program at 8 a.m. this morning. We're going to play that now. We got Larry Pesavento live at 11. And don't forget about Larry's live trading webinar, folks, a week from tomorrow. Sign up right now. You'll start his newsletter ASAP. Thanks, folks.